finally it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Um, if you saw the thumbnail, I want to talk about something I recently acquired. But I did want to give a quick update on Rita Hayworth, R65 Lincoln Continental Convertible. I spent the better half of uh, earlier this week at Blair's Lair over in Clearwater. And I'll be discussing the air condition upgrade uh, for your Lincolns. But I'll tell you this, on the 65, man, it was a pain. You would think that with a few parts, you know, three hoses, a condenser with a dryer built in, an expansion valve, you would say, hey, that's not much, you know, to really do. That should only take us a couple hours. Well, by the time you take a, uh, this piece, which is probably the easier thing to take off, and you lean the radiator forward and you get the condenser out, whether you go above or below. Um, you have your lines on that side that are connected to the condenser, which are kind of a pain. You got to do all that stuff. The compressor is a pain to, if you're going to swap that, uh, to basically take off. And what's ironic is I've dealt with this stuff on an engine stand plenty of times, but just getting underneath to be able to get the three, I think there's three out of the four from the factory on, like that one's a beast. You know, to be able to get all that off um, and then to move over here to where the expansion valve's at, this was the original one, we believe. That is on there, you have to use heat. And then you have this guy here, which was original, this bend where this line comes, where that is at, to be able to get in there, it's really recommended to drop the windshield wiper motor so you can put a wrench on the guy behind it. So, um, you know, Blair kept telling me, hey, this is a pretty big job, you don't realize. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but it's only these couple parts. It'll all go on real easy. Well, it's a Lincoln. And I'll tell you, even myself that have, you know, I pulled engines, I've installed trans, you know, with the help of friends and things like that. We've done a lot on these cars. It's a major pain. Now, what we do have left, technically, is the condenser is mounted. You can see the two lines are not on there. Uh, and the splash shield is not put back on. What we're going to end up doing is the day two, we're going to come in here. We're going to attach the upper and lower line. That's still vacuum sealed. So because there's the dryer, you don't want to let the moisture get in there. That's sealed for the time being. What we'll do in the last um, couple steps is um, go ahead and put those lines on, and then we got to install the compressor. Um, I did take out the old compressor. I do have a new one, um, and you know that shouldn't be too bad. But we have to adjust it then because the adjustment for the belt, which is not on there right now, of course, that comes in way of mo moving this whole bracket. So again, if you've never worked on these Lincolns. You don't really know what you're in for until you go to do it. And someone would say, well, hey, Jay, you know, you've kind of, you know, you know your way around these cars a little bit. You learn from the greats. Absolutely. But it's one thing knowing all the things and being able to explain to someone what they need to do. It's another thing getting your hands on and actually doing it. And I did a good majority of the work under Blair's direction um, this week, kind of the week of Thanksgiving. But I'll tell you, it's, you know... It, it's a lot, and if you just take your time and you do it right, you're going to be happy with the end result. Teresa, our friend TC, she also helped as well, so shout out to TC. Um, but again, once we get the compressor installed, and once we get the lines installed, and we verify there's no leaks or whatnot, what we'll end up doing is we'll charge the system, and because it's going to be that 134A refrigerant, the really the key that everybody has told me is you want to have a new condenser. So although this condenser is not factory accurate, you know, it's it's not um, exactly what came from the factory. Listen, some of these things you just need to upgrade and you just need to not worry about. Is it factory spec? There's a couple things in here, too, that like the horns and stuff that I think Robert and or probably the previous owners, they installed. So there's a couple things on this car that aren't 100 percent factory correct. Certainly not that I'll ever sell this car, but if I ever did, I wouldn't say. Um, nor do I tell people, yeah, this is, um, you know, 
this is all original because it's certainly not an all an original car. It's very much so in many ways original, but a lot of little things like this AC upgrade is going to be really key. It's going to add value to the car as well. And before we go look at the interior that I picked up, you can see there, there's that long line, looks like copper line, and you've got that expansion valve and you go, oh, just put a couple wrenches on it. That's the new one. Oh yeah, that thing's been on there 60 years and um, obviously there's tricks of the trade. If you know what you're doing, you can get that thing off. It took a little bit of time. And again, you see that one back there, you know, you start messing things up or you have to start pulling the dash to go on the other side of that. It's not going to be fun. So it's like, take your time. But more to come on this. I mean, that's kind of a high level overview. You just got to take your time. And uh, thankfully, I've got some people that are that are very helpful and that are helping us out, including Blair and Teresa. So I wanted to highlight something. I had a friend call me and say, hey, you might want to come check out something. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's like, no, I think you might be interested in this. And I'm like, yeah, I got too much stuff. What are we talking about? Oh, Lincoln parts. Oh, so you have my attention. And somebody was... Um, Somebody had acquired these over the course of time, and they were getting rid of them. So I was able to take ownership of said items. These are the, I guess you could say sought after. I don't want to say coveted, but there's a rare feature that started in 64, which was the contour adjustable seats, which we all call bucket seats. And um, this is a set from... I would say 64. I guess it could be technically 65. Does anyone know uh, to, how to tell? I think they're the same uh, in terms of, I don't think there's any indicator that would say, hey, this was 64 or 65. But basically this is the third set of bucket seats that I've had. And again, they're very rare. Um, John Cashman and others have even said that they don't really know exactly how many were ever um, produced or installed or you know sold, if you will, with the cars because of all of those records that burned in the famous fire that people talk about. I don't know what year that is. I need to go down that bunny trail sometime. But basically, anytime you're looking to get um, seats, you want to get the seat, um, the tracks. So, for instance, if you have the normal, what we call bench seat, that's going to have the one big track. Of course, this is the key. When you have the buckets, you have the individuals, right? Um, you have basically the two seats. So these, just to be very clear, are totally disassembled. Um, of course, the bracketry bolts to the bottom of the seat. On each side, you have your center console, which is cool to have. And then this, for anybody that doesn't know, um, or you've never seen this taken apart, this is what the, I guess you could call the seat backs. Um, this is what they look like when they're totally removed. So... Um, I've always loved the 60s cars because, you know, before the headrest really started kicking in and stuff, you know, you got kind of the low backs, as I refer to them as. Um, this is how they disassemble. So when you're getting your full interior done, you know, this stuff is taken apart and all of this stuff is redone. Of course, you've got your stainless trim that goes above. Um, and then you do have your um, seat switches. You can see the one here, one here. Now, this one, in typical fashion doesn't have the middle knob like that one does and sometimes it does break um this one i'll have to investigate a little bit more to see if it's just it might just be the screw and knob there but typically you can find those on ebay um i do think there is someone making a replacement piece for the middle i forget if that's brewer or who that is but this is what the insides look like um i don't know if this is like fiberglass or technically what it is but you can see there the part number and um, pretty cool stuff little piece of history you know in terms of Lincoln's and what we'll do flip this over so you can see what it looks like here there's the bottoms so yeah um, so the next question goes what do I do with these really for the past I don't know five years I have um, envisioned putting buckets in my blue car it's a convertible I did get a really nice set of seats from Tony Bolin in the past I, I I've shared those photos before you know those seats looked way better than the factory seat 
But something about, you know, having this rare option in the 64, I think would be cool, which I call Smuggler's Blues. And what we'll have to end up doing is I'll probably end up getting with Tony and he can go through all of these. We could sandblast everything, clean it. Uh, Blair and Teresa did that on my 67, which I had 66, was it 66 or 67 seats? I can't remember now. Um, I had buckets in it and they went through and cleaned everything. Um, Nathan Wilson has done videos on taking all this apart. All of that becomes like peanut butter, that grease in there. So really this would be the time. I mean, obviously I'm in no rush to do all this, but um, once I get the interior done, I would like to then have these seats finished and installed in the 64. Um, you could see, again, this is the time to take all that apart. Uh, Nathan would talk about, you know, oftentimes you'll hear people say, we've done a full restoration in the car. That means different things to different people. Um, when you're talking full restoration, what Nathan Wilson does, he takes everything apart. He cleans all these electrical ends. He rebuilds or regreases and just redoes everything. And that's what we're going to end up doing on these guys. Um, there is, there was a blog out there where a guy did a restoration years ago. Um, I have it saved somewhere. And um, the seats look just like this, maybe even worse. And once he was done with them, they literally looked brand new, probably better than they looked when they left the factory. That's how good a job he did with painting and or powder coating and just literally putting everything back together. Um, this little guy here. We'll have to go back in here, you know, once we're all kind of done. And the only foobar thing that I see is this, which looks like it's the original plug, but you can see here, we cut that off and clean that up and maybe even just solder that. But um, that's kind of what you got there. 64, 65 buckets. 66 is were a little bit different, 67 as well. But uh, I know there's been some debate. Some people have said, oh, no, 63 was the first year. I mean, everything we can find, 64 was the year. And I think um, even Tony has said, I think the floor on 64 was a little bit different in the early models, in the early production. And it might be the holes, I think he said, on where the bolts go through might be different. I think I've seen some of them where they just got the tape over where the, where the bolts would go if you had buckets. But there were some weird early early uh production i think on the floors of some of the 64s and it was before they decided to go ahead and have the contour bucket seats i don't know if that was early you know a couple months in or what but if anybody has information let me know but um the other thing is you have the console so in the back you can see the light kind of reminds me of the glove box that i believe is the light that plugs in the back we'd have to wire that up and the thought process is you've got your switch right here. Once this opens, that light would kick on. So for anybody that hasn't seen that. And I guess the last thing I'll say is on these seats, this is, um, I was over at Lincoln Land earlier this week. I was at Blair and Teresa's as well. And at Lincoln Land, we were talking about, this is the, um, this is the biscuit. I think Tony often will say bisque, but um, for short, I guess, but biscuit interior this is what I wanted to do. I'll try to flash a photo here showing the 64, which again, if these 64 uh, brochures, if they were out and they had these photos, it really makes me think how early did they decide to do the buckets or maybe even before the production run, I don't know. But really what I wanna do is the, the these buckets, um, put them all back together, of course, totally restored, and maybe get Jim Wallace to do the seats in the biscuit. Not maybe, that's what I am going to do. So I want to do the biscuit seats and then the same pattern on the doors, um, which Jim Wallace can do. Of course, we talked to him the other night. Tony's getting a full interior made for one of his cars. And uh, that's kind of it. I guess the last thing would be, you can see this is with the cover off. That's what it looks like. And anybody that does interiors, especially Nick at Slab Shack, you know, th this this stuff is, you know, they, they have stuff blown apart all the time like this. But uh, you can see the backs. And then look how good the backs look here. And I've often said how I love the original interiors. I 100% do. 
And you could say, well, why don't you just leave them black? Well, it's a blue car, but in addition, these are thrashed. So don't, don't get me wrong. Like what I'll probably do is some videos to show how you could, how nice you could make some old leather look. You know, I love the patina on this. Um, I'm, I'm going to be curious again. I'm not going to, this isn't going to be a rush type thing as far as getting all this done. But I'd love to do some video with some Griots products, which is uh, our official detailing product of Lake Atlantic Podcasts, and um, go through and see how you know people will spend time and they can clean all this up and make it look good. I mean, there's other techniques I've seen people do to kind of fill some of this stuff in. And don't get me wrong, I mean it's not going to look brand new, but might kind of do some of that because again, this patina, pretty cool. That's what I call it. What do you guys call it? You can see this one's got a little bit of almost gross mold, maybe. I don't know. Wash my hands good. But yeah, so there you have it. You got the two backs, the two seats, the center console with the, the plug. I do have um, one thing I didn't take out is it did come with the bracket as well. There's a bracket that goes underneath that mounts to the floor. Um, the other thing that it did come with is the... Um, the duct work. So just so you know, the duct work, the AC does not blow into the back, even if you have the duct work that goes around here. That's only for the heater, from my understanding. So it's not that big a deal, but the duct work that would plug in up here under the dash brings that heat all the way back and under the floor for the rear passengers, but not the AC, but it did come with that. It came with, um, again, the, the metal piece to mount the console and everything you see here. Stay on the rise. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Appreciate all the support. Let me know. Should I leave the bench in the 64? Or should I go with the buckets with the biscuit? What would you do? We out of here y'all. Peace. The Lincoln Continental is the big, roomy luxury car. It will be motordom's symbol of quality. An automobile and a tradition.